Bears. Their defense was punishing. It was physical. The offense was efficient enough. And the final score, 24 to 10, was actually a lot closer than the actual game was. Now, you know, every single coach loves to talk about how a game is about all three phases. Offense, defense, special teams. Well, punter Johnny Hecker put on a show last night. He pinned Chicago inside their own 10 five different times. Normally, if your punter is getting a game ball, that's a really bad sign. But last night was a really good sign for L.A. because Hecker controlled the entire game. Hell, Hecker himself probably could have beaten the Bears because there was no way that Bears offense was driving 90 yards for a touchdown. Hell, as bad as their offense is, I'm surprised they even crossed midfield. Don't get me wrong. The Rams deserve a lot of respect for how they won last night. And the fact that they were mad about the way San Francisco beat them showed up last night, all night. Aaron Donald, as an example, was pissed about how that defense played in that game. And then the last night, the entire defense played like Aaron Donald was pissed at them. And then the offense found its rhythm as well. Let me hit you with a couple of quick highlights. There was the opening touchdown. Macho and Gerald Everett got into the action. He had a TD that ended the game in the third quarter. Hey, notice where I did not play there. Any highlights from the Chicago Bears offense? I didn't play any because there weren't any. They went into last night 5-1. and one. They went into last night as the most disrespected 5-1 and one team in NFL history. And that's because they were arguably the worst 5-1 and one team in NFL history. Like, you know that old beaten into the ground adage that you are what your record says you are? Yeah, well, not in the case of the Bears. Nobody outside that Bears locker room looked at that 5-1 and mark and thought, yep, that's a 5-1 and team, all right. That's a 5-1 and team, and they should be mentioned right alongside the other one-loss teams, Green Bay, Baltimore, Seattle. No, I mean, everybody looked at that mark and thought, the hell they are. And how are these guys 5-1? and one? And that only pissed the Bears off. And they were looking to make a statement now. They were looking to go on national television. And they were looking to prove a point. Because they heard all the heat that they were getting. They were looking to go on national TV and make a point. Which is exactly what they did. Just not the point that they wanted to make. The point they made is that they can't score points. The point they made, they can't move the ball, they can't throw the ball, they can't run the ball, they can't do jack offensively. And you best not come in here and blame Nick Foles for that. I'm not saying that Nick Foles is awesome, but this guy can't do anything with Aaron Donald and the rest of the Rams pass rush up in his face every single time he drops back with Aaron Donald in his face. But it's not just a Foles thing. And it's not just a Rams thing. We've seen this movie time and time again. It doesn't matter who their quarterback is. If the quarterback is wearing a Bears jersey and Matt Nagy is the head coach, it's going to have the same exact ending. He's been the head coach for 40 games. In 24 of those games, the Bears offense has failed to score 21 points. And this guy is the alleged offensive mastermind. Yet he can't scheme his way to three touchdowns a game in more than half of his games. That is some Adam Gase offensive brilliance right there. In fact, this guy is the Midwestern version of Gase. He's Gase minus the crazy eyes. So no, it's not about the quarterback. It's not about Nick. And that's not to say that going back to Mitchell Trubisky is the answer. Because if Mitchell Trubisky is the answer... I'd hate to know what the question is. Hell, Trubisky's never been the answer and never will be. But Bears fans, I hate to be the one to break this to you, but it doesn't matter who your quarterback is right now. Not when that guy is your head coach. Because the offense has been pretty much the same for the past three years. It has not gotten any better. There you go. Same old, same old. And the Bears defense outscored the Bears offense. That's right. The Bears defense outscored the Bears offense. But don't worry. Your head coach, Bears fan, is on the case. Yeah, so my man is bothered. My man is concerned. You might even say he's troubled by all this. So he's on it. I mean, he is really on it. Yeah, great. But can he fix it? Can he fix it? Because he hasn't yet. If the quarterback is telling the coach 
that they do not have time to execute the play call, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. If the head coach can't see that, that's a major problem. Then after the game, Nick, Nicholas, said that that's not what he meant. Man, why don't you hit that word salad with a little vinaigrette? Hey, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Brian Greasy misunderstood what Foles was telling him. Or maybe he was saying something that he thought he said in confidence to a fellow QB. But it sure looks like that's exactly what's happening when the Bears have the ball. It sure looks like the game is being called by a guy watching a different game. A guy who either intentionally or unintentionally is looking to get his quarterback killed. Because last night, Foles was getting killed. It felt like every single time the Bears had a pass play drawn up, he'd drop back, he'd get swarmed, and then he'd just chuck the ball up as high as he could and hope that some receiver ran under it or found it. You know, and back to this notion that you are what your record says you are. Well, that means that at 5-2, and two, the Bears are a Super Bowl contender, which is a joke. Even they themselves know that they're not. Then again, Nick Foles is trying to convince everybody that everything's fine. Nobody panic. We are all good. I guess. I guess it's not. I guess they are 5-2. and two. I even guess that you could argue that they still have a shot at the postseason. Just don't tell me they've got a shot at winning anything that matters. Not with that offense. Not even with that defense. Because as good as that defense is, if it has to outscore the offense to win, ultimately they're going to gas out. They had a golden opportunity in prime time to prove a point last night. To prove everybody outside that locker room wrong. Instead, they proved all of us right. Because they're not what their record says they are, and they're not going anywhere at all. Not with that offense, not with that coach. That's who they really are, and that's how it's really going to be until they make some wholesale changes. And Foles is going to have to rally that team like they're the Dallas Cowboys. That's the quarterback of a 5-2 and two team saying, everything's in front of us. The season's not over. Yeah, I guess not technically. I guess not technically, but that's who they are. And they're not what their record says they are. And that's not going to change until they make wholesale changes. 1-800-636-8686. It's one of my favorite things ever in sports. When a team puts it out there like, oh, man, we're going to make a statement. We have a statement. We got a little something for you all. We have a statement to make tonight. And then they go out and they make a statement. Except they proved us all right.